Greetings and salutations, all you beautiful individuals. Welcome back. It's another repi of League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you, beauties, as we head into the next round of MSI action. We were huffing a little bit of hopium for the West heading into these next rounds. And if I told you, we're going to get a 3 0. Not a single game is going to even go to 30 minutes. I would have said, ah, well, you know what? G2 had some moments. It was a good tourney from them. They showed up in some of these matches. Better luck at Worlds. And then let me, you check the notes. You, wait, G2? 3-0 TES? Huh? Oh, yes, brother. We got the LEC. Powerhouse G2 coming on through with the confidence for a 3-0 sweep against top esports let's just say uh lucky it's in Chengdu because i'm pretty sure top esports will be finding themselves on an aquatic mode of transportation back to the back home after this performance against G2 which was very much a controlled and dominant 3-0 from the very first champion ban in pick ban TES was outclassed in the draft phase throughout this series and Early and often, right from the get-go, game one of this series, you're going right to the bot lane, which we said, this is it. You need m even more of a level up from G2 if they want a chance against Jackie Love. Well, Mickey, he heard us, and Han Sama, I think he heard all the criticism and hate he was getting after that T1 series because, my God, 2v2, 2v3 in the team fights. the bot lane for G2 was at another level this set. There is going to be you know a fork in the road after that performance against t1 where really you do need to look at it and say he did perform well he faltered in those crucial moments for g2 the ones that could be the difference maker is the point and then there comes the criticism and you know examination analysis from the community how do you bounce back from that do you really just not find a way do you shut it all out and do you just kind of still stay focused in or do you take it in? Do you get that fire behind you to perform at this type of way? That's exactly what we saw from Han Sama. This was someone who was out there to prove and had the confidence and belief in his own abilities from that T1 series to say, you know what? I am playing pretty well. Damn these comments. I'm going to show them exactly what I can do, how I can be one of these leading damage options for G2 and continue to pr and provide the return on investment that wasn't there in the T1 series for the resources put into that bottom lane. Oh man, you were putting resources into that bottom lane in this series, you were getting mega return on investment. And even despite TES saying, we've seen that poppy pick out of you, Mickey. We're permabanned in that this whole series, but my guy gets 19 kill contribution on the Leona and is, you know, waiting out Jackie Love, getting him kills in laning phase. Han Sama looks confident, but maybe nobody in the tournament right now is playing with more confidence than Caps, the Western Goat in the mid lane. Three straight Tristana games this series, and my man delivered. Oh, but how, can we take a moment to appreciate the play in game one where he's able to get the buffer on the jump on the Azir ultimate? Three it times he should have died in this play. Flashes away from the Azir and the Tian and then saves, saves the ultimate, the Buster Shot, just for when he needs it and keeps himself alive. The whole fight going the way of G2 from that point and all the game going for G2 from that point onwards. My man was an absolute lethal monster in that mid lane, rocking that Tristana. I can't believe able to stay with that pick, the consistency of it and what he was able to do and what flexibility it uh, provided for G2 to not have that one identified and taken away, you know, maybe sure you can go, there was a lot of things coming at uh, T TES real fast where they had to make these adjustments, had to try and identify what's the problem spot, how do we find an edge and angle into this next game against G2? Never could make that adaptation. And one of the adaptations they didn't make is that one in the mid lane against Caps, and he had that comfort. The adaptation TES did make going into game two is they saw what Yikes Daisy was doing alongside that Ivern and the fight where him and Mickey basically 2v4 as the support jungle and one game of his Ivern is enough for TES to say get it out we don't want that on the Rift in game two. I didn't want that in game two and you know what else comes through in game two 
It's Jackie Love on the Draven is the other thing that comes through in this game too. One of the important things to look at through the pick and ban and identify in this series was sure there was you know a sprinkling of a limitation on the ADCs on that identification to Jackie Love. For the most part, they were leaving priority picks open. They were ready and available. They were challenging that bottom lane to say, you're going to get something strong. We will too, but you still have your choice in a lot of these situations. And no matter what they picked, there was an answer from G2. And this is the standard answer that we have seen a bunch of other times cooked up from them in the LEC, the Kogma Braum. And I don't know what you guys think about Kogma, but I didn't think I'd be seeing a game where Draven didn't utilize his passive and Kogma didn't utilize his passive, and it's the Kogma coming out on top. Yeah, you guys gotta switch champions. You're playing the passives totally wrong, but again, the Kogma against T1 did not have much of an impact, but in this one, the Braum is such a good counter to this Draven. You saw them immediately lock it in once Jackie Love did get that Draven, but they're out playing 2v3 turret dives before Yike even gives them attention, and then Yike does give them some attention, and blink and you miss it, Han Sama was 6-0 to start this game. It was insane how he was able to build up this advantage of the dives and the success that G2 was able to build onto this Kogma and continue to accelerate what this hyper carry was gonna be in this matchup. You know, you see him so early with the Rage Blade and you know, you're kind of seeing all these other items come through after another kill and you're going, man, you ever feel like you're on that accelerated path on Kogma? This was to a whole other level because the way that you feel playing this champion on that accelerated path, on that good progress early, you're feeling mighty powerful. And Han Sama played with that confidence out there on the rift, that damage, it was there for the rest of the squad. And BB, I want to give him the shout out because in these first two games, absolutely getting the raw end of the deal from G2 because all that attention, all those resources, all that prettiness happening for Hansama, happening for Caps was leaving G uh, Broken Blade open to what was going to be going on from 369. What attention he was also going to get from Mr. Tian in that top side. And even if he does come out losing, he was managed to hold himself enough, be relevant in these games that it mattered and that he was a factor in these team fights. And that's something I don't think you could say, even with those advantages for 369, given the type of damage and given the itemization. Let's give that shout out to for Caps and Hansan. And you look at the numbers, the stats post laning phase, you wouldn't know that BB was uh, falling behind, getting attention from Tien, going up against the Cassante raid boss in back-to-back -back games. But yeah, he more than holds his own playing that weak side role. And again, 0 and 10 combined for the bot lane of TES, while Han Sama and Mickey both had 100% killed participation in this game. And the only death between them is when Mickey runs it into the two uh, Nexus turrets at the end of the game. And that was 100% the troll. That was You can't have a zero and... death as a support. No, 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 no. It was almost as if it was that extra taunt to the side of top esports to go, you can't even kill me. I'm going to kill myself as we kill your nexus at this end of game two. You felt bad for Jackie Love in that game because, you know, you identify probably one, maybe a second mistake you know, early and that is capitalized on and you are, you know, you're, you know, held liable for that. But everywhere else in the game where he does get punished, where G2 identify and say, oh, you're building up a couple of things of adoration. Uh -uh, you're not cashing that out. No chance. That was because someone else on top esports was making a mistake. Example number uno was cream in the mid lane thinking whatever he was going to do with that package, coming cutting across the G2 turret, maybe clipping, clipping. The, the Kogma a little bit, get a little bit of damage onto Han Sama, leaves himself way open for the counterattack, gets demolished, and of course, quickly followed up on that. Jackie loves Draven in that mid lane. It was a rough game for top esports, and it was looking mighty, mighty quick and dominant for G2 heading towards the game three. 24 minutes that second game, but obviously a little bit of past trauma, even being up 2-0. Everyone from EU, they cut to the analyst desk. Everyone's saying, shocks, don't say anything. No speeches, no speeches. And game three, the closest of the three games in this set. So there was definitely a bit of on the edge of your seat waiting because we're almost anticipating a reverse sweep as these Western fans against Eastern squads. And 
This time, the Draven goes over to Han Sama, and it's now the full triumvirate for Jackie Love as he gets the Kalista. That's Varus, Draven, Kalista. The three champions he's probably been the most terrifying on this spring split. And again, it's Han Sama and Mickey showing up against the Camille pick for Mako alongside Jackie Love. And the Ivern doesn't get banned in game through. It's another deathless performance for Yike. And then that was one of those ones that, you know, Mako on the Camille. Sure, we can see that type of angle. We can see that type of experiment. But it certainly felt like a desperation back against the wall. We got to find up something. Let's cook up and try this. Didn't really feel it through the bottom lane. I think uh, as what they wanted to get the effect with the Draven. And then you go to what comes through in response. It's the Udyr up in the top side huh? that is the question mark head scratcher for me for mr 369 wanting to bet the season or bet the event sorry on this pick because on the other side it is that Cassante for broken blade he finally gets this champion he doesn't care who the attention is going to be on for g2 now because he's got that Cassante and he knows he's safe and my man he was more than safe he was the danger in this game well yeah he finally got to actually get a lead and play the game from the starting point but how are you gonna see 369 as your lone bright spot in the first two games as tes and then go yeah lock him up that udir in that do or die elimination game just one of many moments in pick ban from tes that you're left scratching your head yeah it was is certainly not the adaptation not the the reactionary response that i think anybody would have wanted to see and especially when you're looking at the own draft of top esports and you've got questions you're not liking it all these type of things and then you talk about what you let through again for your opponent and what they controlled on the day and what type of monster g2 can represent moving forward in this tournament their confidence and ability to play their champions their meta their composition is certainly a strength that they have carried on through and it reminds me a lot of obviously T1 at the most pre most previous uh, world championship and how they identified their take on the meta, what they wanted to do with compositions. Feels a lot of like that with Caps and what this G2 roster can do. And we talked about the confidence they probably got from that PSG series, doing it in such dominant fashion. The confidence they're going to have after this series, well, you can already see it. In the interviews, you heard Mickey say, yeah, now the rest of the bracket think we have to beat every other team in the tournament. And... Well, that will just prove that we're the best. And hey, man, if you beat everybody else at the event, yeah, you're damn right. There should be nothing stopping G2 from having the mindset of, you know what? We step onto the stage. We play our game. We set out. We get our champions. We get whatever we're setting out for where we feel comfortable. We're, we're good enough to beat everybody, right? We know that we can go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, whoever's here, and push them to that limit. Again, even if you lose, even if you're looking on that downside against T1, you're getting to that point. You're getting that opportunity where it is either or. You're one or two team fights away from probably winning that series. And having the execution, having the confidence that you showed throughout the PSG series, throughout this top esports series, and you're building on top of that, moving into what is those next challenges. Looking good for G2 and how they're shaping up. Obviously still need to stay Nice and calm, nice and uh, slightly humble. I know it's G2, so we can get a little bit of cockiness out there, but still, keep it respectful and making sure that we're strong because this is a mighty good-looking opportunity for Caps and the rest of G2. It's not the Perks Wonder era G2, so there's a little less trash talk and cockiness going on, a little bit more humbler, guys, uh, like Yike and Hansama in that bot lane. But uh, G2 does their part. Team Liquid! Your turn. Quick 3-0 over uh, T1, and then you got a 2019 rematch. Now, that's uh, a good point to bring up, because absolutely, this is a game plan laid out for you from G2. And this doesn't have to be just against top esports. It doesn't just have to be against Team Liquid. This is absolutely a path to success at the elite level. I don't care who your opponent is, what region it's coming through. You play with that level of confidence, that level of structure, that level of knowledge of what your composition wants to do, what your champions do, because that's one of the things we got to shout out. Yike not playing the Ivern all the way through his time in the LEC, getting exposed to it only against El Yoya, and he's playing it in this crucial series, and he looks extremely comfortable, extremely knowledgeable on the differences on how you got to pilot this specific champion. That's one of those things that you talk about, having that knowledge, having that comfort, having that execution is a big factor and G2 has shown it to us 
Team Liquid. Can you bring that to the table against TL? A big part of that is the confidence to be able to pull that off. We've not really seen that from North American squads or necessarily in the right uh, application, I'll say. Only once they're Tony's eliminated team. and the games are meaningless, usually. <laughs> we've, we've certainly seen that in best of ones when the NA is already on that plane ticket home. But now we got to see it when there is something on the line, when it is do or die, when it is a defending world champion on the other side of the rift. At the very least, should be feeling inspired and motivated seeing what G2 put on the rift on the day as they advance to that next round. It's Team Liquid right up next on the schedule. But that is it today for League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you, beautiful people, as always. Thank you for hanging out, and we will catch you on that flippity flip.